Hey, I'm Mia Hemstad. I'm a wife, I'm a mom of two kids, and I'm a trauma-informed self-care coach. I also live with diagnosed PTSD and depression. I started sharing my mental wellness journey online in 2017 when I was diagnosed with postpartum depression and anxiety. And since then, I've heard from hundreds of women who all struggle with the same thing, putting ourselves last. This is a struggle that's keeping so many women burned out and unhappy, through no fault of our own, by the way. I've been working on my own healing as an abuse survivor since 2013. But when I became a mom, I really started to do the inner work of figuring out why I was putting myself last and how to start prioritizing myself for the first time in my life. This podcast is about sharing all of those lessons with you. So if you're interested in hearing honest stories, life advice, and inspiration that encourages you to make your health, happiness, and well-being a priority, then definitely stick around. Welcome to your No Longer Last Journey. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope that you are hanging in there with all things considered going on in the world globally and otherwise. And I'm just grateful that you would take time to hang out. Today's episode is about how you can protect your mental health this holiday season and just the end of the year in general. The end of the year can be a really stressful time for moms and for women. So much is expected of us. There's so many obligations at work and at home that it can be even harder than in other times to prioritize ourselves, to meet our own needs, to protect our well-being, to protect our mental health. And for me um, specifically, I have had some significant traumas happen a few days before Christmas. And so for me, this time used to be fraught with so much pain and so many triggers. And so I've had to work really hard on um, protecting my mental health specifically around this time. And so I have three things I'm really excited to share with you because they have helped me so much um, in navigating, you know, this stressful time of the year. And I think it can help you too. So You know, if you also feel like this time of year can trigger old wounds for you, maybe force you to fall back into old patterns, maybe it makes it really hard for you to do anything for yourself and you're already burned out from just how tough the year has been and then the holidays just feel like even more, you know, just like adding on even more challenges on top of that but you like feel like you should be in a good mood for everybody because it's the holiday season and I don't know about you but for me at my day job like there's a lot of pressure to get a lot of my stuff done for the year wrap everything up finish the year strong so to speak you know there's performance reviews Um, and then on top of all of that we're supposed to like go to all these family parties and create holiday magic and make sure we don't forget anyone um you know the things that they wanted toys etc Um, I mean, I know for me, uh, this time of year can trigger a lot of money trauma. And also, I don't know if any of the recovering self-help junkies out there like me can relate to this, but when that new year after Christmas, especially comes up, I feel a lot of guilt and shame about all the things I didn't accomplish. Um, all the things I wanted to do start to come to mind and I'm just kind of like, feeling awful about it if I don't make sure to practice these things I'm about to share with you. So if you can relate to any of those things, I think that these tips are going to be super helpful. So the first thing I recommend straight up, okay, please be honest with yourself about your capacity. And I know this sounds really simple, but I think a lot of us, especially as moms, we're always required to like go above and beyond and be superhuman And one of the most compassionate things that you can do for yourself is to be real with yourself about what you can and cannot do this holiday season, okay? It's okay if you can't do all of the events this year. It's okay if you can't cook all of the the dishes and with the trimmings. It's okay if you cannot organize a party. It's okay if you can't show up to all the parties. It's okay if you didn't make the money that you needed to this year. You know, my husband is still unemployed. He's been looking for a job. He got so close in October to a job and it became went down to him and one other candidate and he did not get the job. And, um, you know, things are hard. The economy is not the greatest for a lot of us out here. And if you are feeling down that you are not able to give your kids the best Christmas ever, I want you to grieve that, feel bad about it, You know, we need to feel our feelings, but also recognize that you 
have done everything that you can this year. You have done your best this year and it's okay to honor that your capacity is what it is right now. Um, and ultimately your kids want to spend time with you as present as you can be and worrying and feeling bad about what you don't have right now is not going to help you with that. So I want you to be honest with yourself about your capacity, get a piece of paper, write down how you're actually feeling unfiltered with all the curse words. You can throw this piece of paper away when you're done. If you're worried about someone reading it, but you really deserve to have an honest moment with yourself. Um, and then after you've become honest, I want you to set boundaries to protect your capacity, okay? And if you're not sure where to begin with boundaries, then no boundaries can be a really massive topic. I recommend starting with my 3D framework that's decrease, delete, and delegate. I have an episode on that. I'll link to it in the show notes. But basically, decrease whatever you can, you know, obligations, commitments, um, chores, you know. There's just seasons of life where I don't mop my floor and I don't sweep it very often, and I'm fine with that. Um Delete, you know, relationships, commitments, parties, obligations, uh, beliefs about who you need to be this holiday season. You know, I get to be sad and I talk to my kids all the time about when I'm going through a flare up of depression or when I'm feeling down. Um, I do not pretend to be happy all the time and I allow negative feelings in this household because it's part of being human. And also um, decrease, delete, delegate. Are you asking, I don't even like the word asking because it assumes that the mom is the primary manager, but a lot of us are, if we're being honest. Um, But are you discussing with your partner what you need right now? Or if you don't have a partner, are you reaching out to whatever village you have, even if it's only one other person, a friend, and be like, I could really use someone to talk to right now, or I could really use more support here or there, you know, really have that conversation about what needs to be delegated off your plate. It is not fair for the entire burden of, you know, managing a home, going to work and creating holiday magic to be all on you this year. Okay. So be honest with yourself about your capacity and set boundaries to protect it. The next tip I want to share with you is to, this one's really important. Okay. I'm going to spend some time breaking it down, but it's a game changer. And that is to accept that some people are unsatisfiable. Some people can never be pleased. So stop trying to please them and stop trying to get validation from them. This is easier said than done, obviously. And the part that I'm talking about, about like just stop trying to please them and stop trying to get validation, obviously that cannot happen overnight. For me, I learned how to release the need to please and get validation from specific people because I've worked so consistently and so long on learning how to please myself and learning how to get validation for myself. So, you know, we can't just stop doing something. We often have to replace because we as humans, we need to be, we need to feel good about ourselves and our choices. And so it's really important if you have always spent your whole life trying to get the, the, the approval from a parent figure or, or someone else, something else, a job. Um, it takes time to replace that with something else, but know that you can do it. But it all starts with accepting that some people are not ever going to be satisfied. And the way that I was able to kind of come to this conclusion is realizing that when people are constantly judging your life choices, judging who you are, judging just like maybe they can't even pick apart your life choices. Maybe you've done everything, quote unquote, right. That society wants like you got the job, you got the college degree, you got married, you had the kids, you know, you got the house, you got the car, like on the outside, people cannot judge you. And so then they were, they resort to judging like your physical appearance. You know, like I remember being at parties and just like people having something to say about my waist, people having something to say about my skin, people having something to say about my hair. Um, I finally realized through lots of therapy and inner work that people who do this, people who put other people down like this, they need to do it in order to feel better about themselves. It doesn't mean they're always doing it consciously. It doesn't mean that they're trying to be manipulative, but people can do bad things without realizing they're doing bad things. So let's focus on the behavior and not excuse it simply because the person might be our mom or our mother-in-law or our father or our father-in-law or our brothers or sisters or uncles or aunts, okay? Bad behavior is bad behavior and you shouldn't have to put up with it simply because that person's related to you. So for me, when I realized that this person or these people were um, judging me or making comments that were just like out of place, unnecessary and rude, 
because they're so unhappy with themselves, so unsatisfied with themselves that they have to direct and project that unsatisfaction like on you. Like they become dissatisfied with what you're wearing, with how you look, with where you work, with where you live, with what you believe, with who you voted for. As long as they can project dissatisfaction outward, then they don't have to look within. They don't have to be honest that they're actually dissatisfied with themselves. They don't have to be honest that there's a lot in here that they're not happy with. Because if they face that fact, then they have to do something about it. And that's really hard and really confronting, especially if that person's older and has been sitting with that identity and those habits and those patterns for a very long time. So what I have learned to do is when people make judge, like I was just at a party a couple weeks ago and someone was like, oh, you have a car? What kind of car? And I was like, a Toyota. And they're like, you bought a brand new car? And I said, yeah. And they're like, well, why would you buy a brand new car when you could have gotten a used BMW? And I'm like, I was like, why would I get a used BMW when I can get a brand new Toyota, which is like cheaper to fix and doesn't have to have repairs and has all these great warranties. And I was like going in my head, like about all my explanations and my reasoning. I wanted to fire back this person and explain to her like all the reasons why I made this decision. And then my healing work kicked in and said to myself, this person is unhappy with themselves. They are questioning and judging your life choices because they don't know how to make conversation. (laughs) They don't know how to be happy for you. Like a healthy person would have said, oh, you bought a car, congratulations, right? The people who love you and who are able to love you the way you deserve those people are able to be happy for you. They're not going to judge you that way. Even if they disagree with you, they're not going to judge you. Um, So what I have learned and what I want to pass on to you is when someone is judging or commenting in a rude or harmful way, I want you to not take the bait. I want you to have a few key sayings or responses that you can just dish out to just do what's called like be a, I think it's called be a gray rock. It's like when the narcissist tries to like rile you up and doesn't mean that everyone's a narcissist, but I really like this metaphor of just like, just be a rock. Don't engage, don't fight back, don't take the bait. And so when someone's like, for instance, with this person, like, well, why didn't you get a BMW? That's a much cooler car than a Toyota. I just went, oh, that's not really important to me. And it's like, people literally shut up after that. They cannot fathom that you didn't cave into societal pressure and bought a car you couldn't afford that was had way more miles on it and was used because you want to be able to pull in to whatever parking lot and have people go, oh, wow, she has a BMW. Like literally could care less. When people hear that you make choices based on your own values and what pleases you and not based on the pressure of society and their opinions, some people just cannot fathom that. It upsets them. And after that, that person just stopped talking. Or like, You know, one time I was at a party and um, my son was only six months old and I was very um, religious at the time and I was practicing what's called natural family planning and I wasn't using any uh, form of contraceptives or birth control. And um, if you are familiar with natural family planning, you basically have to abstain during most of your cycle in order to not have, uh, not get pregnant. And um, so if you do get pregnant, that means either you planned it or you quote unquote, this is like very common in the Catholic community, like messed up or didn't follow the rules of natural family planning because you weren't strong enough, basically. You gave into your urges or whatever. It's like so negative around like sexuality. And um, someone came up to me at a party and was like, oh, so was Charlie planned or did you fail to follow the rules of natural family planning? Like I'm literally in line to get food. And I was just like, oh, why would you ask such a question? (laughs) Like... I was just like, um, you know, uh, my husband and I are doing our best to follow the rules, I guess. But, you know, we had Charlie and and we're happy that we had our child. Like he's six months old and I'm holding him right now. Like, you know, like I don't understand why you're asking me this question. And then they this person went on to to comment on, oh, how, oh, too bad. And then they told me about this other person who had all these like life plans and life goals and how that person, um, even though they recently got married, wasn't pregnant yet because that's not a part of their plan and how they're really great at following the natural family planning rules and how they've been able to um, check everything off their list, um, which is their life plan before pregnancy. And you know, that's so great. I'm happy for that person. If that's their plan, that's the way their life planned out. But what I'm trying to say is, 
people are going to find, the, especially people who know you, they're going to find the things that rile you up and you cannot take the bait. You cannot give them the satisfaction of letting them know that they're getting to you. And it's so important to just be like, you know what? These are my life choices and I'm going to stand by them. And that's part of the process of learning how to release the need for other people to um, give you validation is standing by your choices. Even if you've made mistakes, even if things didn't plan out the way that you wanted them to, be your own biggest advocate. Be the one who, no matter what, will stand by your choices and do not explain yourself to these people because they actually don't care about an explanation. They don't want an explanation. They just want to judge you so that they can have the temporary high of feeling better about themselves. And I look back at that time, which is like seven years ago now, and I was really hurt and embarrassed. Um, I was recently married. I was struggling with the whole uh, natural family planning, cycle charting thing. I was feeling very alone in it. I mean, in the community, uh, the Catholic community I was in, it wasn't okay to talk openly about sex with other people and like, how's it going for you? And um, and honestly, even when I did break that silence and started talking with other my other married friends, they would just basically say the same thing. It's really difficult to practice natural family planning. Um, and I hope I don't get any emails from people being like, it's easy for me. That's great for you. Um, it wasn't easy for me. It was very hard. I had a very unpredictable cycle, an irregular cycle. Um, and I, I wouldn't change it. What I would wish I would, could go back to is go back to that version of me seven years ago and just let her know that like she was doing the best she could and that no one has the right to comment on such a personal, um, personal life decision as that. But these are the things that happen at family parties and I want to remind you and urge you to just not give these people the satisfaction of an explanation. I remember sitting there trying to find words. I was caught so off guard. And I just, I've learned since then, like, that only a select few people in my life actually deserve any sort of explanation. For everybody else, I just say, oh, that's not important to me. Or, oh, that's an interesting perspective. Or, oh, I don't really feel comfortable talking about that at a party. Or, Why would you ask that question? That's so personal. You know, put it back on them. (laughs) You know, why would you ask such a question? Or that's not really, um, that's my personal business and I don't really feel comfortable sharing that. You know, whatever response feels natural to you, I recommend coming up with a few because it's just not worth the energy because the more you try to explain yourself, it's just like you dig yourself a hole and it's hard to get out of. And I really think it's important that you look at that inner younger version of you, maybe it's your inner child who is really needing approval and validation in that moment. And I want you to look at her, close your eyes and look at her and say, I've got us. I approve. I'm here for us. I will protect us. I will advocate for us. And I will not waste our energy trying to gain the approval of people who don't actually respect us and love us for who we are. You have to stand up for your inner child in that way. Not always by defending yourself with a with a thesis level explanation, but actually sometimes the best defense is saying nothing at all. So I highly recommend that you try that because when you develop the muscle of validating yourself first without going out and seeking it from other people, you truly can become so powerful and so at peace it's like you become unstoppable. It's really, really great. And I just really saw that work. I saw the fruits of that labor a couple of weeks ago when I went to that party and that lady was like, well, why would you buy a new car? Why wouldn't you get a BMW? Why would you get a Toyota? And just like all these comp- comments. It was just like, duh, 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 duh. and I just remember being like, mm, that's just not a priority for me. And I walked away. <laughs> I was just like, wow, Mia we're growing. (laughs) It felt really good not to give that any more energy. So yeah, hopefully that can help you. And the last thing that I want to share is find one thing that you really want to do before this year ends. What's one thing that you really want to do before this year ends? And how can you make that happen even in the smallest of ways? 
This is what I call bougie self-care. It's part of my 4B self-care framework. And it's not the bougie self-care that you think where you spend a bunch of money that you don't have or go on a lavish vacation um, or buy a bunch of luxury goods. If that's what you want to do, go for it. But what this means is figuring out what feels luxurious to you. This could be taking a day off work while your kids are in school. I'm doing that actually this week. My kids are in school this week and because I'm in Portugal, um, uh, I don't, they don't have Thanksgiving off. So, but I do because I work for an American organization. So I have been watching TV until noon. I have been going on walks to the beach. Um, I have been just really enjoying my time off. Do you want to spend a whole weekend reading a novel? Do you want to binge watch your favorite show? Do you want to order um, thanks? Sorry, Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, Thanksgiving or Christmas dinner so that you don't have to cook a single thing. I want you to really think about what it is that would feel like a luxury to you. It could be a little luxury. It could be a big luxury. And part of bougie self-care, at least the way that I approach it and the way that I teach it, is to encourage you to... Look at your financial resources because almost always bougie self-care costs money. And I intentionally put that in the framework because it's important, especially for those of us who've experienced money trauma, to regularly face our money trauma, to allow ourselves to spend some of our hard-earned money on ourselves because this holiday season belongs to you too. Yes, you might be a mother or a daughter or a friend or a sister or somebody who feels tasked and obligated to be generous and to create holiday magic for other people. But being generous this holiday season doesn't mean that you can't also be generous with yourself. Doesn't mean that you have to forget yourself or neglect yourself in order to be loving and generous and in that giving spirit this holiday season. And so I encourage you to really reflect on what it is that would feel so good to you, what it is that would help you feel loved and cared for and replenished. And then look at your budget and really face the numbers and identify some money that you can spend on yourself. Even if it's just a $5 latte while you have your friend watch your kid and you read a chapter in your favorite book. That's how I used to practice bougie self-care for years before I could afford to buy a lunch for myself. And even then, I'm still on a pretty tight budget right now, if I'm being honest with you. Um, But yes, face the finances so that you're not just like feeling guilty while you spend the money, wondering if you shouldn't have spent the money because you didn't actually look at the numbers. For me, I can't tell you to practice with yourself care without also encouraging you to make sure that your finances align because looking at your finances and making a budget for bougie self-care is part of the bougie self-care process because it helps you heal some of that um, money trauma. And then I want you to also recognize that taking the time to, to splurge a little on yourself and to enjoy a little luxury is important in order to help you celebrate the end of this year. I know there might be a lot of things that you didn't get to achieve or accomplish or work toward this year. I know I have a whole list of things that did not happen this year, but there's also a whole list of things that have. If I really took the time to sit down and reflect on everything that did happen and things I did accomplish, there would be so much to celebrate and you should just celebrate simply getting through this year. You deserve a little gift from you to you to celebrate all that you've done, all that you've been through, all that you've survived, all that you've accomplished, all that you've overcome, because you absolutely deserve to celebrate and acknowledge your progress. And I don't like this narrative that we have to always wait for someone else to acknowledge that and give us a gift. You can do that for yourself too, and you should. So that's the last thing I wanted to to ask you to do to help you feel good and just boost your mental health and protect your mental health this holiday season. Um, I can't wait to hear how these tips can support you. And if you want to email me or DM me on Instagram, you you can always do that. Um, The last thing I wanted to share before we close out is that if you're somebody who is like, great Mia, I want to protect my mental health. I want to take care of myself, but I don't know where to begin. I struggle with decision fatigue as well and I think it just comes with the territory of being a mom and having mental health conditions and just all of that taking up all my bandwidth but that's why I created the 4B self-care framework ebook 
or guide. It's really short. It just shares the four B's of self-care and I explain to you how to go through the framework so that you can practice self-care without all the decision fatigue and without all the overwhelm of, oh my gosh, I have this small pocket of time for me. I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do first, second, or third. The 4B framework takes all of that overwhelm away and helps you to practice self-care and meet your wants and needs in a very sustainable way. Um, So you can get that for free. I'll put the link in the description and in the show notes, um, but that's always available for you. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this episode helped you today and I hope you can practice some of these things because you absolutely deserve to have a holiday season where you are not neglected. Emotionally, mentally, physically, you deserve to be prioritized. You deserve to be celebrated. And as we close out this year, I want you to acknowledge and recognize just how much you have done and how enough you are. Whenever I start to feel like I'm inadequate or like I didn't do enough, one of my favorite mantras is I am enough, I have enough, and I've done enough. I am enough, I have enough, and I've done enough. I am enough, I have enough, and I've done enough. And it just helps to put me at ease. And I hope it can put you at ease too. All right, that's all I have for you guys this week. I will see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.